Hey, hello guys, this is Karthik from executeautomation.com. This is part 5 of our BDD series. In this part, we are going to understand features and step definition in detail. In part 4, we discussed how to create or install a spec flow, how to reference the spec flow, and how to create a new feature file. And also, we were about to create a step definition file, and we stopped from there. We also discuss how the text explorer gives us a suggestion for creating step definitions for the features we had in our feature file. So we are going to discuss more about feature files and step definition in this part. Before proceeding, I suggest you to watch part 4 since this part is the continuation of part 4. So let's get started. Feature files are the base files to hold all the scenarios and they in step definition looks like this as you can see here. Scenario has many steps but they are just a declaration of operations in plain English test. In order for spec flow to execute the test we need to define the steps in a separate file. Here it's the CS files. That's what we were about to create in our last part. The mapping of plain text with the .cs class step happens as shown below. So now we have a question. How does the steps in the feature file automatically maps to the steps in the step definition class file which we are about to create? Well, this actually happens by the help of a code behind file available in the feature file as you can see here. So we'll discuss more about the feature files, code behind files and step definition file and how to work with step definition files, how the mapping steps happens. Mapping of plain text with C sharp steps can be done with three styles in spec flow. The one is regular expression in attribute, method name underscore, method name Pascal. So these are the three kinds of styles which spec flow follows to map a step with the plain text. And in the tool like Cucumber, the same is followed. So let's not get more into theoretical parts. Let's get started with the practical session. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a name called sample feature steps. So this is actually a standard which is defined by Cucumber that if you're going to create a step definition file, try to add steps at the end of the name so that it will be very easy for, for us while working with out of class files actually so I'm going to click add so this will add me a class file so now I need to add the steps for this so in order to do that go to the feature file just right click it and there's an option called generate steps so if I select this generate steps this will show me a skeleton of all these lines so you can preview this and this is how the code looks like the one which you saw in the text explorer. So I'm going to close this. Instead of creating this one, I'm going to hit this copy method from clipboard. Just select this and go to the sample feature steps.ts file and paste this code. But I'm getting some errors here. The reason behind is I'm missing some references because the given, when, and then are the steps which is only understood by spec flow not by the normal class files. So we need to add reference for this. This you can simply do by pressing control dot the reference to be added. So I'm going to hit that. So this will come here. So all the errors are gone. And then I'm going to save this. And once I go to the feature file, I can right click this particular step and hit the go to definition. And you can see here it's saying there is no matching step binding found for this particular step and it says go to binding but still the binding has not happened here so I'm saying binding binding here in spec flow all the operations are performed all the steps are mapped with the step definitions using bindings so the first thing we need to do is we need to add an attribute bindings and this binding is actually coming from binding attribute so this is an attribute which will tell, hey, these are the steps which I got for your feature. So now, as you can see, the color has automatically changed. It was in a lavender color and right now it is in a white color, which means this thing has right now mapped. Now if I click the 
the go to definition it will automatically take me to this particular line right so this is how the features steps are mapped automatically to the step definition steps and we don't have to create a separate folder mentioning this is the step definition but actually for, while your project grows larger you need to create a separate segregation of features and steps and that's why for the best practice which cucumber also follows they used to in cucumber they used to create a separate folder called features and all the features sits in this particular folder similarly all the step definitions will be residing in a separate folder called step definitions like this and C sharp or the spec flow is very intelligent enough to locate its method automatically as you can see here and now you will have a question how does all these mappings happen how does this go to definition works how does this feature knows that this is my method which is going to perform the operation for this particular line actually you can see all those steps by expanding this particular feature file and you can see there is a CS file automatically created by specflow for me so if we expand this code we can see there are a lot of codes automatically generated by specflow for us and you can see we have a namespace specflow intro dot features which is the same namespace created automatically for our project and it has a lot of attributes and some of the attributes are test fixture setup attributes so in this attribute what it does is it will set up the features or the feature files and the first thing it does is it's going to get the test runners so test runners there are actually different types of test runners in visual studio and the spec flow uses one of the test runner whatever we define in the spec flow test options so this you can see by going to tools options and there is something called spec flow so within the spec flow you have something called general options and then you can see there is a test execution options there we have a test runner tool if you click that you can see it is right now selected auto which is it is selecting automatically whichever test runner you are going to work with but there are some other test runners you can explicitly specify like resharp visual studio 2010 ms test spec flow spec run resharp 5 visual studio 2012 so you can set any of the test runner you want so this line is going to get the test runner whichever you're going to set in the spec flow setting the next attribute is the text fixture teardown attributes so here it will do your teardown operation of a feature once test has been completed or once the feature has been completed similarly it will initialize the test it will uh, tear down the scenario or it will set up the scenario it will clean the scenario and also it will bring up your actual scenario which you're going to perform the operation so here you can see the line whatever you have entered in the feature is automatic brought up here and this will automatically map to the code whichever you have written in your step definition files so this is how the mappings of features is happening automatically with your step definition files so this part has detailed you how the features are mapped with your step definition files what is code behind files and how things works so the next part will start a new scenario and then we'll see how to write an actual working code thank you very much for watching have a great day